Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Özbel. Uh, I'm uh, working for Epistemological Research Center in Brussels. I'm Turkish origin, and I have an NGO as well, which is socially disadvantaged and religiously uh, discriminated people are socially disadvantaged too, according to our perception in the world today. And if I repeat what you all said, I do apologize, but I happily hear that I do agree with most of the speakers. On the ground over here, we have excellent ideas. And I just quote words, starting with uh, injustice from Sultan and tolerance and interdisciplinary dialogues, uh, many other things that we are doing perfect, indeed. We should be proud of ourselves. And I just wished this group should have been in my country. There's a place called uh, garden, interfaith garden, where there is all uh, religious institutions, and then after this they go, some swim, some drink, some pray, some do whatever they like. That is the, my dream world indeed. The, the physically seen somewhere in Antalya, in Turkey, but that should be where the world is. When we look at the last century, Concerning to religion, people were just deciding to scientists, sociologists, uh, uh, mostly, if religion is religious society is ascending or descending, is it privatization or pluralism or whatever? But now there is a new challenge, and when you look at the holy books of all religious religions, all say similar things. All invite us to peace. For example, I'm, I'm having a part, and I'm sure you have heard this many times, none of you has faith until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. None of you has faith until you love for your neighbor what you love for your own self. This is a part from Quran. And uh, Old Testament, New Testaments say the same, love your neighbor, love God, and this is the, uh, beyond all the uh, implementations of the holy books. So if you go Torah and Quran comparison, one says if you kill somebody, you will be killing the whole uh, humanity, or if you don't save, uh, if you save one person, you will be saving all humanity, the same thing. So what is the problem today? What changed? Is, is the doctrines, is the discourses needs to be a litification? No. We are all happy. All the uh, believers uh, or adherents are happy what they have. But the problem is the conflict point. So if the conflict coming from the people, it means people need to be elitificated. People need to be uh, invited to new challenges. And you can, we cannot solve new challenges, new problems, new conflicts with old methods. We should be looking at something different. Uh, I just appreciate uh, my colleague, Mr. Yahya. He suggested education. And I will add this competence development, peace competence. Everybody in our hearts, please, Think of everyone you know around. Everybody has best and the beast in the heart, right? We do accept this uh, physiologically, biologically. Then we should be trying to get the best from the people. Education helps. And peace is so special that it is not that easy just to leave to the theologians to be responsible for freedom of religion, or not to be left to politicians. All the actors in society, wherever the context is, everybody has responsibility, duty, and we should be create willingness for this. That is why I would suggest interdisciplinary approaches. And I don't want to repeat, but 
I really insist on this, this tolerance matter. As the mayor said, it really disturbs me as a scientist because tolerance is somebody does something wrong, you ignore, you tolerate in some way. Dictionary says like this, the unwanted but acceptable deviation from a desired perspective. That's not good indeed. How can we tolerate for somebody's fate? So what shall we do? We have to cohabitate. There is a need to be living together, so the word should be defined again, should be forgetting, and maybe understanding, recognition, or maybe groups such, international gatherings, might suggest new definitions for the interfaith dialogues. And some, some friends said, uh, or in the uh, mainstream society outside, not here, they say, oh, interfaith dialogues, let's do, it is perfect. Yes, it is indeed. But how many of us know that interfaith dialogues started with Prophet Muhammad in Nation, I think people in Saudi Arabia would know that, uh, when suggesting Christians to join them. When they refused, he didn't do anything. So it's not something new, but from today's perspective, we have to look. And uh, many things can be suggested from scientific perspective. I don't want to take your time. But on the other hand, when we are talking about conflict, conflict is a simple word over there, staying. We, we just mean what's happening in, in uh, uh, Central Africa. Boko Haram, many other ISIS, 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 many things are turning in our mind. When the problems or conflicts are such serious, maybe we shouldn't uh, focus on time. I don't mean today, but we should be continuing to understand each other, to, to know each other. If you know somebody, then you can understand, you can learn culturally. And uh, for cultural diplomacy, I like that word very much, but we have a very big facility these days, digital cultural diplomacy. People who will never come together in real life are online. Everybody has a telephone in the end. So it will be a great development tool, digital diplomatic, cultural diplomacy, because religion is the biggest part of culture. So we need each other. We have to live together. But let's support it with education and research, research, research. We have to know what's happening. Then we can suggest, we can premise solutions. Sorry for taking so much time. It's a great pleasure to meet you over here. Thank you very much. Thank you.